Hey everybody, this is Sully with five freaking onion rings and DaVinci Resolve 18 is out in beta form and it is fantastic for a couple things. Now I had a video, what I love, which is surface tracking, which I think is really cool, really cool. I mean, it's really, 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 really freaking cool. I love it. And it has a depth map. And I was like, what is a depth map? But then I realized it's awesome and it's easy. And these are things you can use in the color tab or the edit wheel. And it's freaking awesome. So we're going to jump right in. All right, I'm going to show three effects here. One is how to write on and track text, which is a little bit different than two, which is to do an object. And then three is how to use a depth map to make a background or to make a title go behind you and make your stand out in front. And four is just a quick look at this fast noise, which is really cool. So first off, if you want to track text, the easiest thing to do is to drag a text title from your titles, drag it over to an empty spot on your timeline. Then you type in what you want to type. So just blah, blah, blah. And I like to size it as large as possible. From there, you will go to your color tab, right click, grab still. That's going to go into gallery in the upper left corner. Gallery, where you can see the stills, which have quite a few. But you right click on that and you export the still. That will export. You want to save it as a PNG style. Save it as PNG into whatever folder. Just export it. Then you're going to go to that folder and drag it into your media pool. Now, instead of having text in your media pool, you now have an image and that image is all the difference. Now go to the video where you want to your clip, drag it on your timeline, going into color tab. You're going to click up in the search and do surface as you are a surface tracker. This is going to drag down. You want to create it as a new node, not don't drag it onto the node. You, you won't get as many options, but drag it as a new node. And if you move it over the line, it turns yellow. That's great. Find the title that you want, your PNG file that you want to have and drag it in. It's going to be called an external map. From there, just drag the green to the green and drag blue to blue. These on color on colors, you, you have four outputs. Just drag and you'll have to try which one you like. In text, since it's black and white, the lowest one works fine. In color, some of these are different and we'll see that in a minute. But Surface Tracker is very easy. I like to select the middle of the clip where I want my tracker to start. So you just click bounds. Surface Tracker is still one, two, three, four. I have a video about it, it's very easy. But we're gonna click bounds coming across. Since I have a wrinkly forehead, this is a good way to make sure I have a lot of tracking points. And you see mesh pops up a ton. Now you're going to track. I use this forward and backwards, but if you want to save time, don't go forward or backwards farther than you need to. But this back, forward and back arrow will track forward and back. It does not take long. Now I have a trick for this. I actually shot this in a 1 2 50th frame, not frame rate, but 1 2 50th shutter speed with a 24 frames per second frame rate because it ended up being much, much clearer and uh, not something you would do for the most cinematic. So you can still do 148th, but if you don't have motion blur, your tracks are amazing. So it's easy for me to add motion blur after the fact if I want to. Now, once it's tracked, that was really fast. Go to results. From here, you'll see warp input two onto one. Make sure it's that one. If you change it to something else, you're going to get something that you might not want. So it's, you want warp input two onto one. Your overlay placement. I normally Normally do some people do canvas my canvas doesn't always show up so you have to remember this is beta software so that'll probably be fixed but sliders that's where we're going sliders and you're going to position zoom is what you want to do so zoom down as you zoom down you'll have to reposition so you can keep track of where it is and zoom down 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 keep track reposition zoom down a little bit more now i have found that i just click in this little box arrow to do my zooms because if i do this 
it only it stops at 0.25 which man not, not nearly as good you get a lot more fine-tuning if you just click in this little box and there we go so see how fast that was then you click back and you get your tracking now funny thing about it it just writes on so instantly comes on if you don't want it to instantly come on the good thing about this track again back in your color tab you can scroll all the way to the bottom and you get compositing. So since I don't want it to look like it's just white text on my head and I want it to look like it's part of my head, I do an overlay. So I select that. That blends in like it's laid on top of my head. The other thing is I don't want it to just show up. I don't want it to pop out of nowhere. So I'm going to have it gradually come on. To do that, I'm finding where my finger stops moving and the subscribe stops being distorted. Click there, go to opacity, and set a, what's this called? Marker, we call it. Keyframe, set a keyframe. Click the little red thing to set a keyframe. Then go back to the beginning of your clip and change your keyframe, set it again, but change it now to zero. That way it will smoothly come on. And that's just a little trick. So keyframes work, you can position keyframes, you can have this thing moving, all your keyframes do work, which is just really interesting. Also your composite types work, so if you want to try different types of composites, but I like overlay, works best. Now that's for text. Text just has the simple added step of adding a title, exporting it so that you get your so that you get your text that you want to have. You have to have it as an image, not as a compound clip or as anything other than an image. And this is the easiest way to get an image. If you want to Photoshop an image, that's great too. Now, step the second way to do the surface tracking, which I love, is quite simple. Uh, that is if you use a logo. So uh, once again, you're going to color tab, surface tracker, you drag your node out, you attach your node, green to green, and this time you take your image that's in your media gallery that you want. When you drop your image in, it's going to go to a mat again, and you connect your sources, connect green to green. Let's do the surface tracking first. Bounds. Once again, I want to click my bound arrow. I want to click in here and select where I want my tattoo to show up. My awesome freaking tattoo. Once again, mesh. It's going to create a good mesh. Because again, the sharper your, the more contrast you have, the better the mesh is going to be and the better the track's going to be. You're still going to go forward to back and this one takes a little bit longer cause the clip's a little bit longer, but not too much. It's still pretty fast, pretty freaking awesome. Love it. Do to do, do 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 do. You'll get progress, then you'll get analyzing texture. And the cool thing about this mask is that it will warp and bend with the body. So it'll work out great. By the way, if you know where I can donate hair, please tell me if you have a suggestion Suggestion. So that is done. We're going over to results. You can see that I have parse here. Now, this is where it's a little bit interesting. Again, we're doing overlay placement. I like to do just simple sliders, very easy. Scrolling down, I'm going to zoom. Now you're saying, Sully, what in the heck, man? I don't want it to look like that. That looks like I put a freaking picture on my. That just looks like I put a picture on. That's, that's, that does not look cool. Now, from here, you can actually just overlay if you happen to have a very if you want the whole thing you want it to look like a box you can you can overlay uh sometimes that works Blech. but what i normally do is each one of these four outputs has a different effect so the top one gives you a nice color and you can see it in here let's just bring this up so we can see golly that is a mug why can't i drag, can I drag? there we go so from here you can see it's a little dark doesn't look bad um, want that bigger though. Uh, yeah, there we go. Like I say, it's real time stuff here. This thing, I'm just blown away by how well DaVinci works anymore. Also remember, this is beta, so uh, if this happens to crash, it happens. But that's the top one. Gives me a good look. I kind of like it. This is the bottom one. Much fainter, much more faint, fainter, however you want to say it. I don't know. Uh, if we do normal, that one looks most natural as normal. Uh, third one up gives you a different look. It's like it, it focuses more on certain colors or certain areas. That seems to be the one that shows everything and it might, might be different. There's no highlight for this, but there is an instruction manual if you want to read all 3,000 pages to find out what all these do. You do want to make sure you're going to the lower, the lower limit, the, the lower blue down here, not the upper one. If you go upper, it's 
it's very interesting because it will just uh, mess your world up. Yeah, so up one, no fun. Go to the lower one uh, and make sure you remove that upper. Since I liked the upper blue going to the lower blue and then I like overlay, that's what we're going to stick with. Again, experiment, experiment, try what you like and when you hit play, it's going to go. One cool thing about this, it will warp with your hands so even whenever I'm moving, notice the shadows, notice how it crinkles up a little bit and it tries to stick as best as it can so that it disappears without looking too fake, which I think is cool. Works out really well, really, really well. I love that. I love this effect. Now comes to the best one that I have, which I happen to really enjoy. Uh, we're going to put over here, maybe. So this one comes to the best effect that I like, which is making a title pop behind you using the depth map. This one you don't have to go to the color tab, so you can stay in the edit tab. Can increase this up. What you're going to do at the point where you want your title to go behind you, which for me is the clicking, so I find my snap. You're going to cut and duplicate. So you press Alt, click, and drag your clip above your title on the timeline. It's going to make your title disappear. Boo! We don't want that. But it disappears at the exact point I want it to, so that's great. Now on your top one, you go over to your effects, you go down to open effects, there's a search, and you're doing depth map. D-E-P-T-H, depth map. Drag it onto the clip you want and you're immediately going to get a surface map as soon as you click effects. And for here you can do better quality or faster. I like faster because I'm in a hurry. Uh, no. Better is good. Better is better, don't get me wrong. But you won't be able to see in real time as well. So if you like your effects in faster, it, but you want a higher output, a higher quality, yeah, do better. But if you do better, you, you better have a really fast computer. Other than that, though, I don't need, I actually don't need better here because it works out really well. I have a nice blurry background anyway, so it can predict where my subject is. But it is easier if you turn on the depth map preview, set your far limit, you want it to be black behind, and you want near limit to be white in front. The problem with this, for me anyway, is that now that I can see, my hair gets all janky. Like, since I have a little hair sticking out, it, 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 it doesn't look right when it snaps behind because suddenly you can't see through my hair and you get some weird stuff. So for that, it's pretty easy to fix. You're just going to do some post-processing, expand contract, and you can make it look better so that now you can see parts of my hair you can see through it. Yeah, it's a little bit. Uh, it's over some parts, it's not over others. You can work around that blurring a little bit. You can post filter, keep it away from my hand. You can expand contract and you could try isolation if you want. Isolation will make things a lot of fun. Um, isolation does it by target depth and because of that it won't, you have zero chance of fixing my hair problem. So for me it's mostly the expand contract and yeah, expand contract some post filtering blur, a little bit of blur, let's expand a little bit more. There we go. Pretty easy to get something that works, especially for YouTube. I mean, you're not, unless you are doing for professional work, you will be able to get something workable. This is still, there we go, that actually looks pretty good. This is much faster than the old surface tracking or the old object mask, which you can use in the color tab. But for something quick and to run a title behind someone's head, that's pretty easy. That literally is it. And it's it's a matter of just dragging your depth map onto your clip and tweak to your settings, to whatever you want. You can do better if you want. Ah, better though just kills your, kills your frame rate. So you can't really watch in real time with that or unless you have some very small proxy settings and you want to do, you know, you, you can, you can. I personally, I don't use better that much. If I'm going to use better, I, it's easier to do the object masking. But for this, I like it and click and there you go in a quick glance you know for as fast as you're doing it depending on what your use case is this gets to be really easy now another 
thing for Da Vinci. I know I'm going longer than I expected here. I'm trying to keep this at 20 minutes, but we have fast noise. Now, something about text again is that you can't draw, you can't drop effects on the text. So in this case, you just right click on your text and you do new compound clip. That creates your compound clip. And from there, you can go back to your effects, fast noise, drag it over onto your compound clip and voila, you suddenly get it. Click your effects again. And in appearance, I like water surface because it makes it all funkified. And from there you get some evolution. You can, you can change the speed. You can get your detail balancing. You can make it just look trippy. I mean, if I really wanted to be trippy trippy, I could actually drop my fast noise on my background and change. I haven't tried this yet. So if this goes wrong, forgive me, but I want some water noise in my background, giving me some weird like, woo and click and suddenly everything in the background is funkified that's actually really cool uh, if you want to trip someone out that will do it um, yeah but anyway fast effects this is real time again I don't know if it's because I have an Nvidia 2070 not the most powerful graphics card but a pretty good one but it, the fast noise doesn't affect anything in terms of speed so i am thoroughly impressed with it thoroughly thoroughly impressed it's really good uh, you can do smoke you can do a heat haze except heat haze does weird things to whatever you're looking at so i tend to avoid that one water surface is the fun one to me um it just gives you a lot of, a lot of fun stuff so yeah water surface you can change it up however you want if you want some creepy effects there you go fast noise is a new one i love playing with it I'm going to use it in the future. But for now, that's three different types of tracking. What in the world? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Three different types of tracking and three different methods for how to track, how to move, and how to get some funkifiable titles that suddenly easily go behind that you can do in the edit tab to make all those crazy titles that used to take hours in fusion or if you had to do an object tracking or all that good stuff. But that's it. If this helped you in any, any, any way, thank you very much. Please like and subscribe. If you have a place where I can donate hair, let me know where and I'll be more than happy to consider it. Right now I'm looking at wigs for kids uh, to donate hair for cancer patients and people undergoing chemotherapy and you know trying to make some kid a little bit make their life a little bit easier. So I want to thank you very much. Hope you have a wonderful day. It's been fun. Nice to see you again. Y'all be good.